Hey everyone, Merry Christmas and we're going to be talking about a tree that grows on cryptocurrency like Bitcoin and Ethereum and it's called a Merkle tree. What is a Merkle tree? The best way to explain what a Merkle tree is, is to show you how to build one. And to construct the Merkle tree, you first start with a non-empty array. For simplicity, we're going to assume that the length of the array is a power of 2. For example, the length of the array can be 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, but it can't be 6 since 6 is not a power of 2. You'll see in a moment why we're going to need an array with a length of power of 2. Next, for each element in the array, we're going to compute the cryptographic hash of the element and then store it in a new array. From this array of hashes, we take the first two elements and then compute the hash. We take the next two elements and then compute the hash. And we continue this process until we computed the hash of the last two elements. Next, we take this computed hashes and repeat the whole process. Eventually, you'll get a single hash and this is called a root hash. And this is how you construct the Merkle tree. Now if the number of elements in the original array is not a power of 2, then at some point of the Merkle tree construction, there will be an odd number of computed hashes. For example, if you start out with 6 elements, then you'll get 3 hashes after computing the hash of the pairs. And as you can see from here, we cannot compute the next level of hashes since we need 4 hashes but there's only 3 here. So if there are an odd number of hashes, then the trick to compute the next level of hashes is to duplicate the last element and then compute the hash of the duplicates. In essence, this is like filling the tail end of the array with duplicates so that the length of the array becomes a power of 2. So how is a Merkle tree useful? One application of the Merkle tree is that you can create a cryptographic proof that a transaction was included in a block. Imagine that there are a bunch of transactions that are waiting to be included in a block. To create a cryptographic proof that these pending transactions are included in the next block, we first construct the Merkle tree from these transactions and we include the Merkle root hash into the block. Now, if Alice wants to know if her transaction was included in the block, all she has to do is get these four hashes, recompute the Merkle root hash, and then compare it with the Merkle root hash that was committed to the block. If the two Merkle root hashes are equal, then she knows that her transaction was included in the block. Now, another way to create a proof that a transaction was included in a block is to concatenate all of the transaction data and create a single hash from it. The problem with this approach is that in order to recompute the hash, you need all of the transaction data. So if there was 1000 transactions in a block and if Alice wants to know if her transaction was included in the block, then she will have to download all 1000 transactions and then compute the hash. However, using a Merkle tree, she only needs log 2 of 1000, which is about 10 hashes. So in summary, a Merkle tree allows you to create a small cryptographic proof that a certain data is included in a set of data. And using this property, you can create a proof that a transaction was included in a block. Next, let's implement a function that will verify a Merkle proof in Solidity. We'll name the function verify and it's going to take in four inputs. An array of hashes that are needed to compute the Merkle root, the Merkle root itself, the hash of the element in the array that was used to construct the Merkle tree, and the index in the array where the element is stored. This function will return true if it can recreate the Merkle root from the proof, leaf, and index. Otherwise, it will return false. We'll start with the leaf, recompute the Merkle root, and then compare with the Merkle root that was provided. To build our Merkle root, we need a for loop that will update our hash with the elements of the proof. First, let's try to figure out how to compute the parent hash from the very bottom of the Merkle tree. Notice that the indexes of the left leaves are all even, and the indexes of the right leaves are all odd. 
So this means that if the index is even, then we need to append the proof element to our current hash and then update our hash. Otherwise, the index is odd, which means that our hash belongs to the right branch. And we need to prepend our proof element before updating the hash. And this will give us the hash one level above from the very bottom of the Merkle tree. We want to repeat this logic where we concatenate our current hash with the proof element if the current hash belongs to the left branch. And if our current hash belongs to the right branch, then we want to concatenate our proof element with the hash and then update the hash. Now notice that if our starting index is 3, then our parent index is 1. And if our starting index is 2, then our parent index is also 1. And in general, if our index is either 2k or 2k plus 1, then our parent index is equal to k. In other words, we divide our current index by 2 and round down to the nearest integer. And the way you do it in Solidity is like this. And this completes the code to verify a Merkle proof. Now let's go over how this function would work. Let's say that there are eight elements and we want to verify that the third element is contained in this Merkle tree. So the proof must be an array of hash of the fourth element, the hash of the hashes of the first and second element, and the hash computed from the right side of the Merkle tree. The leaf will be the hash of the third element, and the index will be 2. We start from the hash of the third element. Since the index is equal to 2, our proof element must come from the right. So we concatenate our current hash with the hash of the fourth element and then update our hash. And then update our index. Our index was 2 before, so 2 divided by 2 is equal to 1. And our current index is now equal to 1. And we move on to the next iteration of the for loop. Since our current index is equal to 1, this means that our proof element must be on the left side. So we append the current hash to the second proof element and then update the hash. And then update the index. The index is equal to 1, so 1 divided by 2 is 0 0.5. But since we're doing integer division, we round down to the nearest integer and 0 0.5 rounded down will be 0. So our index is now equal to 0. And that completes the second iteration. For the third and final iteration, the index is now equal to 0. So the proof element comes from the right side of the Merkle tree, which means that we need to append it to our current hash and then update the hash. And lastly, we check that the Merkle root that we computed is equal to the Merkle root that was provided. So that's how this function works. Now let's try this function out in Remix. Now I've created a separate contract that I'll link in the description below that creates a Merkle tree from these data. And the Merkle root computed from this array is this. And these are the two hashes that we need to prove that the third element is contained in this Merkle tree. The first proof element is the hash of the fourth element. And the second proof element is computed by hashing the hashes of the first and second element. For the first argument of the verify function, we need to pass in an array of bytes 32. We do that by typing in a pair of brackets. Inside the brackets, we enter our two proof elements. Notice that we wrap each proof element in double quotes. Also notice that the order of proof element is important. If you switch the orders around, then you won't be able to compute the correct Merkle root. Next, we pass in the root, the leaf, and the index of the leaf, which is 2. Hit verify and it returns true. So this proves that the Merkle root was constructed from an array where the third element is equal to this data. And the way you can mathematically verify it is by taking this hash and the hashes of the proof. And if you change any part of the input, then the verify function will return false. In this video, we went over what a Merkle tree is. A Merkle tree is a tree that is constructed by taking paired data and hashing it. 
pairing the resulting hashes and then hashing them again until a single hash remains. This is called the Merkle root. And it can be used to cryptographically prove that an element is contained in an array without revealing all of the elements in the array. One example of this is proving that a transaction is included in a block without revealing all of the transactions. Well, that's all I got for this video. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year's, and I'll see you in the next video.